So here we are with our preview plane, and uh, we need to add a little bit of animation to this. Simply grab the curve, set the tension to 1, and it's perfectly uh, eased in. And we don't want to ease it out, we want, we want to really push it out so that it eases in and then stops abruptly as it slams. And we may even want to do a little, uh, a little bounce on that slam. Throw some negative tension on there. And you see when I uh, change the continuity on here, it kind of took the nice curve out of our... Okay, that feels pretty good. So now I want to look at it from the camera view because it's obviously a lot smaller in actual camera. I'm going to select something other than the camera so we don't see the rotation handle. And we'll make a preview here as well. And I'm going to copy this one. I'm going to close it. I'm going to go back to the right outer. Same thing. Go to the envelope. Paste it. Select all the frames. And I'm going to push them forward three frames. I'm going to copy this one. And I'm going to go to the other outer. Open its pitch envelope. Paste the curve in. And same thing again. Select all the keys and push them forward three frames. Yeah, that looks like kind of a little test uh, sequence. Alright, so now we have a door slam and we have our uh, wings doing a little test sequence. Let's look at what that whole thing looks like from around frame 80. Look at our Y position and once again we need to ease that out. Or ease it in rather. We want it to be accelerating on the way out, so we'll put negative tension on here. And we'll see how that looks. Hmm. So it's lifting off, and then you can see it kind of linearly starts rotating after the liftoff. I guess that's okay. That'll work for now. Now I'm wondering if I could get a little bit of color into that illumination as well. So uh, let's look at our nodes, where our surface is coming from. And here it is, it's a dielectric node. And its color right now is gray. So I'm kind of thinking a nice uh, cyan might do the trick. Let's see if we can make that happen. OK, so there's a nice, pretty nice looking little cyan illumination happening there. I like that. I'm just going to leave that for now. So now we have this little cyan antenna, this kind of uh, dielectric plastic, transparent plastic antenna that's lighting up and, you know, during the startup sequence for our rocket. Okay, so there's our preview with our feet rotating into position. And as I watch this, I realize um, this the feet rotating would look a lot better if they rotated out as the ship lifts off, as though they're spring-loaded uh, to go into that uh, flying kind of sideways configuration. So I'm going to take a, another look at that. I have a feeling that that'll feel a lot more realistic. So let's just grab one of these guys here. And uh, I'm going to just remove his curve for the moment. So you can see our lights blinking there. We can see the antenna blinking as we animated it. That looks really good. And there's the, the door slam and the wing test sequence and the feet flipping up. So that is all looking really good. I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with how that's looking. Uh, and uh, next step, we'll move on to creating some particles for this rocket ship. Okay, here's our uh, VPR preview.
Okay, I don't think the downward velocity is fast enough looking at it from this view. Looks like they're kind of gently spewing up out the back end instead of causing a propulsion. So uh, let's look back in our emitter at our particle motion and let's try setting this to maybe minus four. What's well, that saying? Meters per second. Velocity in meters per second. Negative is downward, of course. So let's try that and see how that looks. And let's also try to increase uh, the strength by making this uh, blend mode instead of just add. Let's call it a heavy wind and calculate that. Okay, that's kind of some interesting stuff. We're definitely getting some vortex stuff happening in there. Let's look from the camera view. 40 frames maybe. And we'll say at the end, at frame 40, we'll have a value of zero. So they'll be completely transparent. And that's totally, uh, well, it's not linear, it's spline smoothing right now. But let's have, have a look at what that looks like. Okay, so that's actually disappearing too fast. So I'm going to grab another key up here that's 100. I'm going to push my curve out a bit and see what I can get. Okay, it doesn't look like any of these things are really stopping at the edge. However, I think I do want them to fade out a little sooner. So we'll go back to our Viper VPR and go into the hypervoxels panel. Turn off the show particles. We just want to see the voxels here now. I think we'll go into the shading and we'll adjust our density gradient. Okay, here's the new version of our uh, VPR render showing our hypervoxels that are working a lot better. Um, there's a bit of a funny bounce uh, and an outward movement happening. Uh, we're going to have to lock that down. I think we could probably do that by, again, dissolving out the uh, hypervoxels a little bit sooner. So, uh, but in terms of the particle animation, I'm feeling pretty good about that. So uh, for now, we're going to call this done.